Thank you all for coming out today. The topic of my interest today is going to be a tale of two risks, understanding diabetes and smoking and how that affects the gum health. When you look at a picture of an ecosystem, always you think about coral reefs, plants, fish, and different organisms living in that environment in harmony and contributing all towards that environment as an ecosystem. And there is also destruction of this ecosystem, which leads to a change or a shift in the normal species that are present in that area, in that environment, to a completely different set of organisms coming in. And the harmony in that area or the environment is completely lost. And our oral cavity is no different. What you're looking here is all of the health-associated species in a healthy oral cavity and all the streptococcus and all these species living in harmony together to contribute to the health of the host. And in disease, all of these health-associated species are lost or got lower in abundances, and we have a lot of disease-associated species coming up. And why is this important? Because the dysbiosis, we call it, which is a shift in the healthy ecosystem, has been implied in the oral cavity in a number of diseases includes dental caries or cavities, gum disease or periodontitis, and even recent reports show that oral cancer could also be one of the implied factors. Why is gum disease important? Besides, I'm a periodontic resident, but greater than 50% of the American adult population suffer from periodontitis or gum disease, and it is a huge economic and health burden. Interestingly, there are only two established risk factors for periodontitis or gum disease. One is cigarette smoking, and the second is diabetes. <clears throat> and greater than 50% of the patients with periodontitis are either current or former smokers. And uh, periodontitis is even considered as the sixth complication of diabetes. There's also a, an interesting fact here. 24% of diabetics are cigarette smokers, and smoking also increases the risk for getting diabetes by 30 to 40%. So we have smoking, diabetes, and there's also some kind of intersection there that we need to look into. So our first question was, does diabetes by itself have an influence on the oral ecosystem that we are talking about? So what I'm showing you here is on the top left is actually a chronic periodontitis patient who presented in my practice. And on the bottom, you see actually the diabetes patient uh, with chronic periodontitis. They both have you know, really grossing out pictures with all the plaque and calculus and disease and bleeding. And what the graph here is actually the blue dots all represent the diabetic population. And the green dots represent a control or population with no risk factors. But both of these population groups do have gum disease or periodontitis. When we plot it on the graph, you know, each dot here represents a sample. And the distance between the two dots tells you how similar they are in their microbial profiles. Without me explaining, you could actually see that it's a distinct clustering based on their diabetes status in the two groups, regardless they both have gum disease or periodontitis. But what causes this? You know, what is interesting in diabetes, and we all know that A1C is an indicator for glycemic control. And the American Diabetes Association classifies it as pre-diabetic or diabetes or uncontrolled diabetes based on the levels of A1C. So we thought, we'll include in our data and see how this helps. And we found that not just the human body reacts to the increased glycemic control, but even the bacterial cells love sugar. So there is a distinct membership that is contributed by the glycemic control. So we could see a difference based on their pre-diabetes levels, a diabetic or a post-diabetic, as explained in the graph here. So now we know that there are two risk factors, diabetes and smoking. And they both are increasing the risk for getting gum disease. So how does they react, or how do they act on the oral ecosystem? Again, the same graph here. We call this linear discriminant analysis. On the top, again, you have the patient with uh, diabetes. On the bottom, you have the patient who smokes. And orange dots here represent the smokers. Again, there is a clear separation between a diabetic and a smoker based on their microbial profile. Again, they both have gum disease with a similar clinical presentation. So what causes this difference? You know, all we can say now is yes, there are differences. And yes, A1C level does cause or influence this shift. But why? And what happens here? So there are two major characteristics of a bacterial species when you talk about. One is their age-old gram staining, positive or negative. 
and their requirement for food source, either oxygen or they can survive in an oxygen deprived environment. So the oxygen deprived environment are anaerobes and there are, in oral cavity is very interesting because the bacteria, we constantly talk, we constantly open them up and you know, so they have to be, get used to adapting to both the aerobic and the anaerobic environment all the time. So they are called the facultatives which can live in the aerobic environment or in the presence of oxygen but when you deprive them, they can still exist and survive in the anaerobic environment as well. So those are called the facultatives. And looking at the blue bars and the red bars here, which are representation of smoking and diabetes, the blue bars show, which is the diabetes, shows that there is an increase in the facultatives when, when you compare it to the control group or the smoker group. And it's a mirror image. When you look at the graph, the smokers have increased in anaerobic population, so they both affect the microbiome, but in their own unique way, that there is a complete set of microbial suite in diabetes and in smoking. Then there is this, this group, double trouble, diabetic smokers. And we said, you know, if diabetes is bad and smoking is bad, then it should be an uh, additive effect, right? They both should add together and should be even more bad or it should be something calculatable with the help of understanding the effects of diabetes and smoking. When we plot the same graph, we realize not exactly because the diabetic smokers cluster themselves away and they are not similar to either smoking or diabetes. So now we have to realize or understand what causes this difference and why is this happening. So to venture deeper into this data, we did something called a core microbiome analysis. So what it exactly means is that we are trying to figure out which bacterial species is common in that particular cohort. And so for this, say for example, we have 10 subjects in a group, in a cohort. And if the bacterial species are present in eight out of 10 subjects, then with a certain amount of abundances, then we call that a part of core microbiome. So we kind of get the commonality in this picture. So we took the core microbiome and we plotted them. So this is a graph, again, all, each of the bar here represents a single species. And again, the color coded is no risk factors in green color smoking in orange, and diabetes in blue, and diabetic smokers in brown. And we found that you know, there are definitely few, if you look at the graph here, there are few of those which are present regardless of the exposure, that these bacterial species are present in all four groups. And these four, uh, <coughs> the species which are present in all four groups are actually Streptococcus and Actinomyces, which are present in every one of us. It's, it's regardless of uh, having disease or not having disease. Those are the basic fundamental structural part of your oral microbiome. And then it gets interesting when a person got smoking, then there is something which is common to the disease of smoking and diabetes only, but not in diabetic smoker. And then there's something which is present only in smoking and not in diabetes. And then there's a lot more of intersections. The take home from this slide is that there was only 4% of core microbiome in a diabetic smoker. So which means out of all the bacterial species that we were studying, there was only 4% which had the commonality or sharing traits that can be identified in the diabetic smoker group. So we're comparing with our diversity analysis, we came to a conclusion that the diabetic smoker is more heterogeneous. And the diabetes is the next heterogeneous group, and then smoking, and then the disease process itself. But we need to realize who are the, or understand who are the MVPs. All these are the common or the most important bacteria, but we need to understand what are those which are the anchoring species or which is holding this ecosystem together or the anchors together. So we did a lot of uh, network analysis and graph theory statistics, and we came up with those big nodes and edges which are clustering and also interacting with a lot of other bacterial species holding them all together. And those are the MVPs. And those are the listed species here, uh, mostly related to disease again. But why should I understand the commonality and why should I identify an MVP in a disease cohort? That could be the connecting factor. Once we take that out of the ecosystem, maybe we can collapse the disease uh, ecosystem and try to get back into health or we can manipulate uh, some kind of local antibiotic therapy. So we have a lot of potential options to go forward. And clinically, when you think about it, three patients coming in and with periodontitis or gum disease, with no risk factors, diabetics and smokers, presenting a similar form of disease. And clinically, the same factors, we're gonna treat the same. 
but the underlying molecular factors and the microbial factors are different in these risk factors. So if we are moving into personalized medicine and personalized periodontal therapy, one size does not fit all. We need to target the high-risk cohorts and then give them a unique therapy to make sure we have effective treatment outcomes. Thank you.